I'm going to do a small um, homesteading, suburban homesteading update on this video. I anyway, if you're not wanting to hear what I'm gonna have to say for the first couple minutes of this, we're already in three minutes now, um, just go ahead and skip forward to the next chapter and you can skip all my BS. I don't care, you won't hurt my feelings. It's um, <clears throat> getting increasingly difficult to um, not say something. Um, politics. Um, so I'm going to indulge myself for just a couple minutes. I'm not gonna get too far into this um, because regardless of which side someone is on, I will agree that politics should not and has and should not uh, have infected everything in our lives. There's no getting around it. There's no getting away from it. If politics has been injected into everything. And I've tried not to do that on my channel. This is mainly a video log. Um, I think I'll, I, I've gotten, you know, I only have like 300 some odd subscribers. I'm, I'm really nothing. I'm not even small potatoes. I'm like, you know. So, but I think what few people have subscribed to my channel outside of uh, family and friends probably did so because of the hunting videos that I put up. And it's probably a nice escape just to see a do-it-yourself uh, hunting video by an average guy, not no major professional hunter, name brand, or anything like that. And I get that. I mean, and I, I, I enjoy watching those myself. Elk 101, by the way, they're, they're totally taking a spin off of um, the latest episodes of Elk 101. They're totally taking a spin off of um, Alone. And I've, I haven't gotten through the whole thing yet, but it's, it's getting me fired up for the fall, and I really enjoy watching those, so check, out, check them out. Um, oh, man, yeah, this is a kitchen table conversation here, I guess. Talking to you, hypothetically, um, or just talking to the camera. As far as suburban homesteading, and I put that in air quotes because it's not real homesteading. It's just trying to make yourself a little bit more self-sufficient. And um, um, maybe that's what I should make my channel about, hunting and homesteading. I don't know, but it's not real homesteading, like I said. But um, it's probably something most a lot of people might want to consider. Um, now, Mr. Potato Head has supposedly come out and stated the obvious, something which those of us who have been paying attention already kind of knew. And the, the math of this goes like this. At least one quarter to one third of farm fertilizer is imported from Russia. Fertilizer prices have tripled, if not quadrupled, but I think tripled is, is the appropriate figure. Gas prices, you already know about, I'm sure. You add all these things up, what it amounts to is that farmers' overhead is going to be huge. Um, next uh, harvest, which will probably be in the fall, I'm guessing. October sticks out in my head for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's because that's where elk season is. Rifle, anyway. Um, now, I fear that the cost overhead may put some farmers out of business. It'll just sink them. But at the minimum, you're gonna see major food price hikes, possibly. The trouble is, is nowadays is that everything, I don't care what source you go to, uh, 
what whatever mainstream outlet you pick, whether it's Fox, um, Newsmax, whatever, they're all towing some line, and I don't think any of them are telling the truth anymore. I my my philosophy has been believe nothing that I hear and only half of what I see. But the point of this is that it's really hard to make predictions, accurate predictions as to what to anticipate and prepare for in the future. Everything is so seems so chaotic on the national picture. Locally, everything just life kind of continues on as normal. But it, it it just feels like there's a clock ticking, you know. So uh, that's one reason why you might want to start looking into um, gardening and chickens. I find that gardening and chickens are kind of a symbiotic relationship. It, lawn, garden, and chicken. Because chicken um, litter mixed with your lawn clippings makes great mulch. And the chickens support your gardening and your gardening supports you and your chickens. So it, it's a nice cycle there. <clears throat> Beyond everything else, um, I just want to say that um, I'm greatly concerned. I'm angry, and there's not a damn thing I can do about it, except, you know, prepare for the future, whatever that may entail. It just, I'm going to say, I'll, without, I don't want to get too far into this. The destruction seems deliberate. Our country is deliberately being destroyed, it feels like. And I, I believe that we are being groomed. The American people are being groomed for war with Russia. It's not our fight. And um, you just think of me as a concerned father, I'm a son, I'm a father, and I'm a veteran, and I am greatly concerned for the future, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's frustrating. All right, I'll get off my soapbox, and I'll show you what we've got going on. Almost forgot to water the carrots. If you look carefully, you can see where we planted them right there, right there, and right there. I'm gonna pair them back out. I'm gonna own up to all the mistakes that we've made because I firmly believe that no experience is wasted so long as you learn something from it. Um, gardening wise, in the long run, I think it was a mistake not to build these three courses high. This works though, it works. Um, I may do with as much money as we could spare on this because uh, the price of lumber, even when I built these, I think at the end of 2020. Um, this is like, back then, this was like $1,800 in, in lumber, which is ridiculous. So I ordered exactly what we needed and um, I made it work with the minimal amount of material. If we had the money to, to spend on it, I would have liked to have made these boxes more robust. <coughs> anyway, we've amended the soil, tilled it. The only thing that we have planted right now is right here. And Ideally, I think we should be growing stuff that continually produces throughout the uh, spring, summer, and fall. We're going to try growing some peas here. Um, this box gets lots of shade. Last year, we tried growing peas, and the sun killed them. Mulch here, already know about right there. Um, learned a little bit about grapes. What you apparently what the idea with grapes is that you want to funnel the energy, so all the all the superfluous vines, you clip those off and you kind of direct the growth, and where it sends its energy. So you want it to spend most of it, the plant to spend most of its energy in producing grapes, not branching out everywhere. We are going to have to string some fencing material 
for between here and there to let these vines have something to grow um, attached to. So eventually we're gonna have a whole vine lining the whole wall, the whole fence. These raspberries are going to be fun to trim. I'm not sure what we're gonna do with these things yet, but they are prickly. Um, we're paying for this shed now, I'll tell you what. Inflation being what it is. But I already knew that when we ordered it. Um, I think a shed, uh, some form of shed is almost essential. Um, this is all gardening stuff here. Um, and this is all chicken stuff over here. One thing I've noticed at my local supply store, um, they didn't have any um, pellets in. And uh, I just stocked up on feed for the summer. And uh, about a week ago. And they were stocked up with chicks. They were already selling chicks. I went back a couple days ago to buy, the, to buy this feather fixer for when they molt. They were already sold out of chickens or chicks. So something to keep in mind, wherever you're at, if you decide to grow chick, uh, raise chickens, get them quick because they go fast. This is what our, I wish our boxes were looking like. So here's our chickens. Oh, let's see if we got any eggs here. We might. They've been laying their eggs later in the day now. Before last year, they were laying them. Um, whoa, we got one on the box there. Yeah, get your head back in there. Yeah, I better leave them alone. Last year, they were um, laying all their eggs before noon. Uh, this year, this seems to be in the afternoon. Oh, and I will cut to another portion of what we learned about chickens over the winter here. Um, two mistakes that we've done with the chickens. Um, the first mistake that I regret is not when I built this run, assembled this run, that I didn't put a bunch of cinder blocks on the bottom and set the whole thing on top of the cinder blocks. Um, main reason is because opening this door is a pain in the butt. You have to clear everything out in front of the door. Had I put the whole thing up on blocks, I would have made a layer deeper for the litter and I would have got the door off the ground a bit more. So fixing that mistake is going to be difficult, to say the least. Because I'll have to dig the entire run out, put the chicken somewhere else, and lift everything up. It's, I don't know if I can do it or not without breaking something. The other thing that we've learned is I had a problem with snow drifts. So I cut this plywood. It's actually a nice plywood. I hated using it, but it's what we had. And I put some dunnage, some old pellet dunnage right there. And it stopped the snow drifts from inside the run. I've had to shovel that run out like three times this winter. Not fun. And the chickens have taken to yeah, I need to clean that thing out. The chickens have taken to uh, pulling all the nesting material out. Hey, Adrian. Get back. And uh, this one here took the molting in the middle of winter. Um, I have not had to install a heat lamp. We have five chickens with a small hen house. So, they've been able to keep themselves warm. 
and they're already producing eggs. All right, these are part of the spring planning. Uh, I think this is a cilantro, and I don't know what that one is, but it's not time to put them out yet, but we got them indoors for right now, which reminds me, I'll show you. Uh, we're about to do some start soon. Here's some starting soil that we've already um, sifted through a, a sifter to get all the big stuff out. We're literally doing our starts <laughs> in the basement, um, or we will be. Last year, we do our starts, it, they kind of failed miserably. Um, we're going to try doing a better job of it uh, this year. We're probably going to start our seedlings, our starts, um, this weekend. I just kind of putzed around with that to get uh, some new grow lights in. This whole shelf I built myself um, back in 2020, I think, in 2020. Uh, so we'll see how this... We'll see how this goes this year. Hopefully it goes better than it did last year. The challenge on a 0.14 acre lot, or is it 0.12, is to make the absolute most of what little land you have. This is my boneyard. I got all kinds of, I got like plumbing and Extra parts for chicken. Uh, chicken room under this part. What's an engineer of that same bag, right? And this here is our flammable storage. Um, I got some uh, fuel preservative in all these, so these should last for about two years. Um, actual NATO jerry cans are pretty stinking expensive nowadays, but they hold up way better than these. Uh, um, yeah, my recommendation for flammable storage, don't store this crap in your garage. Uh, it needs to stay out of the sun and well ventilated and away from all sources of ignition because this is potentially one big old bomb. So to speak. So, be careful if you store fuel. Well, there's a dime tour. Not much else to say, really. This video came out a lot longer than I was planning on. Anyway, um, if you watch this far, uh, turkey season's coming up. I might start scouting for that uh, next month, April. General season's in May. So I might poke around and scout around a little bit. And you might see my daughter. Um, she's about eight. I need to start taking her out. That kid is in dire need to find some grit. <clears throat> so I'm going to have to help her with that. <laughs> anyway, have a good one.